Hello, I'm Nate Furley, Regional Agronomy Manager for the Western Region here at Bex Hybrids. Today I'm here to talk to you about microbial nitrogen products. Well, what do we think of when we think of microbial nitrogen products? First, let's look at what we think of when we think of nitrogen, right? The different forms of nitrogen that we apply are often what we think of when we think of nitrogen because we purchase them, we're attached to them, but page 105 of the Western Fertilizer Handbook says that the object of a good fertility program is to fill the capacity of the soil to supplement the plant's needs. Have you ever thought about it that way? Instead of managing the plant needs, manage what you can put into the soil and exchange into that plant. So again, thinking about nitrogen in the different forms, they do have a play in our nitrogen management. You look at anhydrous, for instance, compared to urea. They're going to break down in different ways. They're going to become available at different times. And often, they're actually going to be available to that plant in different times according to the environment. So how do we pick the right one? Today, I'm going to talk more in depth about some of the nitrogen management strategies, but then we'll get into the microbial products. So if we think about the biology, the biology are important in the process of converting that nitrogen. We know that because nitrosomonas, nitrobacter, are very crucial in the process of converting our synthetic fertilizers into more readily available plant forms, nitrate. This process depends heavily on the environment. Uh, too much water can slow them down by lacking oxygen in the soil that they need to survive. Uh, soil temperatures, right? We need adequate soil temperatures at that 70, 75 degree range for optimal, uh, optimal work but they're important in that, in that process. So again, when we think of nitrogen, what we put out there in the soil doesn't always result in availability to the plant right away. So applying all of our nitrogen up front raises the most common risk associated in nitrogen management, and that's not being where we put it when we want it. Applying that nitrogen up front in this process in that conversion, we run that risk of the volatilization and the leaching. So how do we time our application of nitrogen with the form of nitrogen to that maximum uptake? <clears throat> First, we have to understand what that nitrogen uptake curve looks like, right? We have that V5 to VT is when that maximum uptake takes place. So again, the risk of putting that nitrogen up front is that it may convert too soon and be in a form that's available to the plant, but also volatile or can leach. So how do, we, how do we manage that, right? A PFR proven practice is split applying nitrogen because we start to hedge our bets a little bit on getting that conversion and that availability of the nitrogen closer to when that plant uptake needs to take place. Another factor that I believe is very important in nitrogen management is understanding that capacity. Okay, like stated earlier, if we start thinking about it from managing the capacity of the soil's holding versus the needs of the plant, we can hedge those, those, those bets on, on how much that soil can hold and how much we need to apply when. So how do we do that? Looking at a standard soil analysis, we want to look for the cation exchange capacity, or CEC. We take that number multiplied by 10, and that'll tell us the total pounds of nitrogen that that soil can hold at a given time. So this field, for instance, at 19.6 and 20.6, pretty good, okay? Our economic optimal nitrogen rate of 190 pounds would serve very well on this farm, even in a single application. But what if that soil CEC is, let's say, 14? 14 times 10 is 140. So 140 pounds of nitrogen is what we should look at putting maximum into that soil in a single application. Here's where that practice comes in. Splitting that nitrogen by applying 140 pounds, even if it's up front, and then letting that plant uptake what converts. Let's say at V5, that corn plant is going to uptake about 50 pounds. So we have 110 pounds left in the soil. We can come in at that V3 application apply 50 pounds and replenish the capacity of that soil so that we're closer to that uptake curve later in that season at that V5 to VT. Again, it's a different mindset, right? Managing the capacity of the soil versus the plant needs. Both important, but I believe they're very important in that management process. 
Looking to the future, some of the growing factors that have an increasing effect on our nitrogen management program are these, economic, environmental, and social. What do we mean by environmental? Right, a lot of regulations coming down the pipeline. Currently where I live in our county, there are acres that we cannot fall apply nitrogen. But I don't know any farmer out there that doesn't care about the environment because of the economical. Us as farmers, we don't want to put that nitrogen out there and risk losing it. That's a lost investment. That's lost yield potential. So we still have to look at all of the factors involved on the environmental, the economic, and as well as social. So enter the four R's, right? The right source, the right rate, the right timing, and the right place. All very important. So as we look at those management strategies, I believe that that should be common information as we make our nitrogen decisions. But what about the future? There's such an emerging landscape of products that are coming down the pipeline that we can often get confused. But there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of exciting things coming. For instance, humic acids or humic substances, they can have a positive impact on that soil's ability to hold nutrients. What about seaweed or kelp? As that breaks down, that feeds the biology that are in, in very important in that nitrogen conversion process. But today I want to dive a little bit into the microbial side of it. Again, we said biology, right? Nitrous monus nitrobacter. There are other strains of biology that are also beneficial in this conversion process. Now, there are a lot of products out there. It's a, it's a very large emerging landscape of companies. Uh, we can't test them all. We would like to test them all, but currently in 2020, what I'm going to talk about are three products that may have a new approach. Again, can we increase yield and ROI by increasing the efficiency of the biology in the soil or adding the biology needed to convert so that we can help that process time out a little bit better towards that plant uptake? So in 2020, we tested a new approach, microbial nitrogen products, three of them, Source, Invita, and Pivot Bio. I'm going to talk about how each product works as they're marketed and then go through our findings from our 2020 PFR data. Source, applied foliar, is a biology that goes to work stimulating the soil's biology, increasing their activity and productivity, getting more out of the native soil biology that do exist. And Vita is a biology strain added to the soil in furrow that goes to work as it colonizes, entering the cells of the plant to help that plant fix its own nitrogen. So think of soybeans. Remember the air that we breathe is 78% nitrogen. So as those legumes do, creating that symbiotic relationship in the soil with the rhizobium, fixing atmospheric nitrogen for their nitrogen needs, Invita goes to work helping that corn plant do the same thing. And finally, pivot bio. Pivot bio's microbes adhere to roots, and they also create a symbiotic relationship with the corn plant, but as the populations of the applied microbes increase as that corn plant grows, the maximum output of the microbes is at the same time as the peak uptake of nitrogen. So having that timing right, okay, so that, that's, that pivot bio product is applied in furrow. What's our data say? So in 2020, we tested source at a rate of 0.7 ounces per acre, applied at two different growth stages, V4 and VT. Found on page 117 of the 2020 PFR book, source at a cost of $14 per acre, uh, we see that the activity of the biology helped achieve a higher yield, but not in all cases did it give us the higher ROI. So uh, keep in mind that this is multi-location, multi-hybrid data. That means that we tested this across multiple locations on two different hybrids, a nitrogen efficient hybrid and a nitrogen hog, or one that's going to be a heavy user of nitrogen. We also tested these at two different nitrogen rates, 190 pounds and 165 pounds. The reason we tested those rates is the economic optimum nitrogen rate of 190, as well as that 165 reduced by 25 pounds of nitrogen because we thought as these products were applied, we could reduce that amount of nitrogen. So again, two different hybrids, multi-location, two different rates. A lot of information packed into a little bit of data but the yield was promising, unfortunately not the ROI. 
If we look at our nitrogen fixation study where we tested in vita, we tested it at a rate of 3.2 ounces per acre applied in furrow at planting. Found on page 118 of the 2020 PFR book, Invita has a cost of $9.95 per acre, and at the higher rate of nitrogen, we saw a negative yield, obviously a negative ROI. In the 165, though, we saw a positive yield and a positive ROI. So kind of going according to what they say, right? Reduce the amount of applied nitrogen and maximize ROI with the product. Maybe not an add-on product. Let's look finally at Pivot Bio Proven. We tested it at 12.8 ounces per acre, applied in furrow at planting. Looking at the data, uh, which you can find on 116, page 116 of the 2020 PFR book, uh, Pivot Bio Proven, we used a cost of $20 per acre. In both the nitrogen rates, we did see a yield increase, but not enough to experience that positive ROI. The best yield increase we experienced at, again, the lower nitrogen rates. Although we didn't see that positive ROI, there was still enough positive information from that yield as well as the tissue sampling that we did that we would like to look at this product again in 2021. So to kind of wrap up, uh, a primary reason for the inconsistent results that we saw, we believe have a lot to do with the environment, right? As I stated earlier, too much water eliminates the oxygen in the soil, can reduce the activity of biology. Uh, soil temperatures have a negative effect on that. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of environmental things that have an impact on virtually all of the biological products that do exist. We have a lot to learn in this realm. I'm, I'm excited about it because we have the ability to test not only biologicals, but biostimulants as well. So, as we look to the future, we want to just continue to look at how these biological products work, where they may work best, and why we see the results that we do. So, my suggestion is stay tuned. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.